Okay, so still in the blueprint land, uh, again, also known as the abstract setting, you know, where we're just working with one through 10. Try to prove this guy. So I'll start, this one's a bit easier, I think. C times zero vector is, well, well, what you can do is you can take that zero vector and replace it with zero times any vector. Uh, you'll just say u is just some vector in v. Or maybe I should say v up here in any vector space v. So u is just some vector. Okay, because then I can do this, 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 this. I can go, oops, I'm missing a quotation, or I should quote, or a reference, rather. I'll put it in in just a second. Okay, so I did, I did two things. One was to replace the zero vector with the real number zero times some vector. And that was, oh, this was from our previous example. Now I established that there. Um, here I'm using axiom nine. Uh, is that right? Yes, that's right. So, so here we have C multiplied by zero. So this is, I'll say this is happening in the real numbers. Okay, so nothing Nothing to say when I replace this with just the real number zero times u. Okay, so I don't need to say anything about this equal sign because in the real numbers, you know, anything times zero is zero. Uh, and then zero times any vector is the zero vector. And that is, again, from the previous or preceding example. OK, there's a few more results like this. Um, I think some of them, at least some of them, are discussed in the exercises in 4.1. Okay, negative, negative one times u is the same thing as negative u. What the heck are we talking about there? Well, very careful application of logic here. Negative u, that is the thingamabob that is referenced up here that we we'll talk about in the definition. Uh, this guy, okay, negative u, its existence is guaranteed by number five here. Yeah, that is one thing. That's the right hand side of my equation. Sorry for the scrolling. So that's what this is. And over here we have a scalar, a scalar negative one times that same vector u. Now, how do we know those two things are the same? Well, we don't. And that's why we would have to prove this equality. Okay, so two things that appear to be the same, but again, you're very carefully applying uh, the tools you have. And again, a tool you have is, a tool you don't have is to say, uh, the, that's not, it's not a thing. 
What else? Another statement. The zero vector is unique. Okay, another strange one. Okay, we have the existence of a, of a zero vector in any vector space. That's one of the axioms. But how do we know there's not another zero vector that is distinct from the, um, the first one we find, say? Uh -huh. You can prove that there is only one zero vector. And you can prove that there is only one negative for each for each uh, vector u in my vector space. Okay, so these are not obvious. They have to be proven from the vector space axioms.